Today we will discussing how to calculate some statistics of daily weather data. We will use the formula equal promedio dot c dot conjunto. This is the instruction in Spanish. In English is equal average if s and in parentheses what we have is first what where are the data that we want to calculate an average for then we have a first condition and then a second condition we could add more conditions to that so the first thing is the range where we're gonna calculate the average in this case, the instruction tells that the average of the D column will be calculated for all the data that meets two criteria. The first criteria here indicates that the value in column K should be equal to the value of cell N3. The second criterion is tells us that the value in column L should be equal to the contents of cell O2. We can transform this formula, like in here, where we have equal average if S, and then we have the range, the first condition, and the second condition. Here again, we have two conditions. The first is related to the values in column K, and we add a dollar sign to indicate that column K is going to be used independent of where we have the cell that we are calculating. We have also a dollar sign before N, and that means that we will be moving in column N, and the three value might be N3, N4, etc. Here, the addition of a dollar means that we will be moving in the second row for columns O, P, Q, etc., depending on where the cell is. Let's see an example. Here we have weather data in Excel and the different columns are the first one is the date, the second is the day of year, maximum temperature, minimum temperature, maximum relative humidity, minimum relative humidity, mean wind speed in meters per second, solar radiation daily values in megajoule per square meter, per day and rainfall in millimeters per day. We want to calculate monthly statistics for these different uh, variables. First of all, we're gonna calculate which is the day and which is the month for each date. See that here the criteria for the date follows the month, day, and year. Here we write equal dia, dia means day in Spanish, and then we click on the date, and now we click here, we hit control C to copy, and then we put here until we see a cross and double click. So, for each date, this formula has provided with the day of the month. The second is going to be the month equal mes in Spanish for this date. Now we click here, we hit Ctrl C to copy and then we put the cross on the lower right 
part of the cell and here we would have the month. We can also get the year, año in Spanish for this date. We control C, then we put here the cross, double click. Uh, so now we have here the day of month. Here we have the month. And here we have the year. Now we would like here we have data going from 2002 until 2017. We would like to know what is the average maximum temperature for each month starting in 2002 and ending in 2017. Well, we start by a year that is going to be 2002. We're going to write it, well, we're going to write it here in column M, 2002. We delete that. And now we're going to get the different years by a recurrent formula, plus 1. And now we click on that and copy. Okay, we have... We don't need this. So these are the years included in this data. Now we're going to get months from 1, 2, 3. Now equal plus 1. Now click on that and copy until we reach the month number 12. Okay, now we have here the month numbers from 1 to 12 and here we have the years from 2000 and 2017. What we want to do first of all is to calculate the maximum temperature, the average maximum temperature for January of 2002. For that, we will use that formula that we have seen before. In English, would be average if s. In Spanish, is promedio si conjunto. Promedio dot si dot conjunto, and then. We use the parenthesis as explained before. Click on enter. Okay, we see that there is a problem with the formula. Why? Because we are we have to decide which are the column that we want. We have said that we need to calculate average values of maximum temperature. Therefore, the range that we're going to be calculating is column C. We write instead of D, C. Okay. Then we have the first condition. The first condition is that K equal to, that is now N3. That means that the year should be 2002. And the year is the column L. So here we would have L, okay, and then the second criteria is that the month should be equal to O2, which is 1. And here the month is this column, and this column is K. So we write here K. K. And let's try if it works. 
Okay, we have still. Sorry, we were saying that we need that the year, which is N2, should be equal to the year in this column, which is 2000, which is the column, uh, uh, the year is column L, not K. So we write here L, L, and should be equal to the value of the year here, which is N3. And now the value of this column, which is the day, which is k, should be uh, equal to O2. Let's see if the, now it's working. Yeah, looks like so. Now we can use Control C and now we can copy that to the different years with Control V. We are copying that. But we can also copy that to all other cells. Control V. And here we have the average maximum temperature for January 2002, February 2002. For instance, this is the value for July 2002. Now we can calculate averages for each year. For instance, we can calculate the average would be promedio of all these cells and now we can click on that and now we can have the averages for each month promedio in Spanish of all these and now we Control C and now we copy to the different months. Control V. So now here we have year mean values for each year or mean values for each month. For instance, the average maximum temperature in July in this location is 31.42. Or the mean maximum temperature in 2009 was 23.7 degrees. After we have calculated the monthly statistics in Excel, we're gonna take these monthly values and we will calculate the frequency distributions, the cumulative frequency distribution for the variable. We click on copy, then we go here, past the values, and now here we have, this. in this example we have values of average maximum temperature for the different months and the different years in the dataset. Let's do the statistics for the maximum temperature during July, like here. We take the whole data set. We have data from 2002 to 2017. Pass them. Sorry. Copy and now past here. And now to calculate the cumulative frequency distribution, we need to assign values to the sorted data. We take this and go to data, sort, ordinary in Spanish. And we have a single column from less to higher values, from lower to higher. And now we have sorted the monthly values of temperature, maximum temperature of July. Now here we will 
put values from 1 to the number of years that we have. Here we can use the recursive equal previous plus 1. So we go here, control C, and now we copy, control V, we have 16 values. And each value corresponds to the order from, go, from the minimum to the maximum. To calculate the probability, what we do, we, we will do it here. We click on equal, the order number divided by the number of data plus 1. In this case, we have 16 data plus 1. And this is the frequency, the probability level. We click on copy, and now we pass. So, now we have here value, and here we have the probability. We can plot this, insert, and we have here this person, and this is the plot of probability versus value, which we call cumulative frequency distribution. How can we interpret this graph? Well, this graph tells us that, for instance, we have a 50% probability of the maximum temperature during July not exceeding 31.6 or we have a probability of 90% of the maximum temperature during July not exceeding a value of 32.7 we can see also that we have a probability of 10% of the maximum temperature during July not exceeding a value of 25, 29.8. In other words, the probability of exceeding 29.8 as average temperature of July is 90%. Therefore, this is a summary of the probability viewed in terms of a cumulative distribution. And the cumulative distribution function gives us the probability of non-excedence of any given value. Now, using this cumulative distribution, we can also deduce the frequency distribution. And the frequency can be deduced using these probabilities and taking the increase of probability for each level. By definition, we're going to be calculating this minus the previous value. Well, in this case, we take just the same because, sorry, copy and then we copy here the value and now after that we take the increases minus the previous so we'll see. Control B 